What's up? And welcome to the first episode of Flicks and a Six, your movie and beer podcast brought to mm. you by <laughs> <laughs> brought to you by the spintune.com, which is our new entertainment endeavor. The flagship, if you will. The flagship. Uh, I'm your host, Anthony Costanza, with me as always. From Alessandro now and, <laughs> and from now and forever, Alessandro Bielsi. Alessandro Bielsi, also known as Al. Al, yeah. No one's going to call him Alessandro. No, going please don't. Forward. Please don't. Actually, he actually hates it. Um, I think that's what you're going to. You're now going to be called that forever. The Alessandro. Oh, yeah. As long as you put the the in front of it. <laughs> the. I, I need the article in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Al. Yes. What? When did we come up with this idea? It's been a while. It, <laughs> We're off to Ripper already started, yeah, everyone. There it is. Oh my god. <laughs> so the general so for those of you that don't know me or my handle, um, I started a podcast with a couple of friends called The Shit Show uh, a couple of years back, I think now at this point. Now we did we had a handful of episodes. It was good. We had a little bit of traction, it was a lot of fun. Um, but it kind of died out and we were trying to come up with a better idea and how to keep it going, and there's gonna be more on that front soon we do have some plans in place and that's where the spin tune was born out of um so this is just an idea that al and i had where but wow that's that not is, gonna happen anymore yep <laughs> uh where we love movies and one of the things that we found is that we we love to just like just to you know grab a few beers and, and talk about a film that we've seen and it's just something that we've done we've always done so we decided to do it for your listening pleasure right whether or not you like it Remains to, <laughs> remains to be seen. Um, that being said, uh, let's kick this thing off. Uh, so Al, so graciously, brought us some beers. I did, uh, because what is a Flix and a Six podcast without a Six? Right. Uh, and you heard the opening moment. The inception of this podcast was <laughs> the cracking and pouring of a delicious beer uh, from Newberg's own Gigaboss Double IPA. Uh, one of my favorite beers. Anthony has had the uh, pleasure of having, well, not this beer, but I don't think I've had this some of their beers yeah. before. The distinct pleasure of having some of these beer before. Pretty cool brewery. Yeah, uh, I like it. A I word can... that I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> brewery, which will be one of the words that we banish from uh, this podcast because Anthony cannot say it. Cheers. That was so loud. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> mm, yeah. So that's a double IPA. Um, Strong, it's flavorful, mm. but not overwhelming. Not overwhelming at all. Uh, it, I think it's like we, we should probably note that nobody has endorsed this podcast. Oh yeah, no. We, we, we like their beer. That's why we're drinking. We like it, their beer. But... I'm friends with the owner, Paul Haleko. Um <laughs> He gave me no rights to <laughs> use the names uh, or logos. Um, not that you can see the logos, but we're looking at the beautiful cans. Um, we're gonna get shut down way before we start. We're gonna get shut down way before we get started. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, what do you think? It's nice, uh, delicious, nice, nice clear, uh, light, pale double IPA. Uh, it's pretty strong. I forget exactly. Let me stop you right there. Yeah, um, nine percent. I need alcohol. to let the let the folks know. We're gonna do this thing two ways. One, Al is gonna tell you a little bit about the beer. He's gonna break it down for you, flavors, profiles, the things like that. I'm gonna give you good or bad. <laughs> good. I like this one. <laughs> Proceed. Eight out of ten. We'll drink again. <laughs> We'll drink again. We'll drink again, certainly. <laughs> yeah, so um, I am the uh, official amateur beer connoisseur. Uh, I brew my own beer under the name of uh, Al's Ales. It's not trademarked. Please don't take it from me. Uh, <laughs> we will later in the podcast feature uh, our discussion on one of my beers, the most recent uh, beer that I've brought to, uh, well, not the market, but to people's mouths and stomachs. Uh, His own personal market. My own personal market. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a nice hoppy uh, offering, double IPA, 9% by uh, volume. We're having a sweet pint of this, having it fresh and ice cold, um, and I enjoy the hell out of it. Uh, yeah, it's nice citrusy notes on the nose. Yes, I'm uh, indulging in all the uh, beer snobbery that I can right now. You can, hear, you right can now. hear all of it. It's yeah, you great. Can, yeah, you heard the inhale. So, uh, yeah. You're also going to hear me about eight times a podcast. Slam, just slam, just slam it down the, the table. table so. Eventually, I'll get this thing suspended so that doesn't happen. But um, <laughs> yeah, we'll have the uh, mic hanging. This, this from is... the ceiling fan. It's gonna be great because we have the ceiling fan going, 
So right. uh, you'll hear us go in and out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't. We're not. There's like no shot of us pulling in money for this. So you're just gonna have to bear with the uh, the tech that we have. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is a fly by night organization. So uh, it's the only way to live, man. Uh, <laughs> All right. So moving on. Without further ado, let's get into our our show here. And one of the things I'd like to bring up is the Oscars. Oscar season is upon us. Go on. As it is. Yes. As, <laughs> as, as they say in the, in the biz. In preparation, Al and I have decided to see at least a couple of movies that are up for Best Picture. Now, it, that's a little difficult. Um, it's, one of the, it's, it's, t- it's tough because Best Picture nominees come out right before the Oscars. As like always. It's, it's right there. Like, but the movies also get released at that point, I feel like. So there's no chance that we would have seen them before. Yeah, I'm sorry. We both uh, have lives. Um, unfortunately, this is not our life yet. So, um, yeah, we're just going to watch a couple of them. Yeah. We watch a couple of them. As much as we'd like to uh, knock out an entire week of uh, Oscar bait. Fair. <laughs> right. I would love to do that. Just call on sick. I got, got that flu. I came pretty close a couple of years ago, but the release schedule was a little more forgiving. Um, it was a year where there was the Alan Turing movie, The, uh, the Imitation Game, mm-hmm. Uh, Birdman, Grand Budapest Hotel. There was a whole bunch of them across like it was like two months or even maybe a little bit more. So I was able to watch like five of the ten Best Picture nominees without having to like put undue stress on myself to go to the movies. Sure. Fun, fun little side story about uh, the Imitation Game. Kim and I went to go see that. Okay. And uh, we were online. It was like an early. It was early on a Sunday, similar to today. When yeah. We went to go see Axel Ridge, but we we didn't have the tickets in advance or anything like that. We went and picked them up. We're online. A couple of old ladies behind us, sweet little old ladies. They were trying to figure out what movie to see. They were both there together to just to just go to the movies, which I love that. Yeah, I love when you go when you go there. You don't know what you're doing. Spur you're just like, just, what I'm doing we're here. We're going to see a movie. It doesn't matter. What. It's it's getting harder and harder to do that. What with assigned seating and whatnot. But um, yeah, we don't. This really theater have that up this by theater us. doesn't didn't have that, so we were good. Uh, Plus so this couple of, couple of old ladies behind us, they're chit chatting. Me and Kim are listening to them, overhearing their conversation, and uh, they were tossed between two movies. The Imitation Game, and that Paddington Bear movie that was coming out. <laughs> so the conversation went like this: What's that one? What's that Imitation one? Ah, oh, that's the one with the with the Benjamin Cabbage Patch. <laughs> that's the one. And uh, what about the Paddington Bears? <laughs> that's uh, that sweet little lady. I was so happy. That conversation could have gone a lot differently. Uh, I'm, I'm just surprised they knew the Benedict I, Cumber, I, uh, Cumber what now? It was, uh, it was Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin. Benjamin Cabbage Patch. Okay. Cause hey, I'm, you got the initials. That's all you need. Exactly. So I'm, I Let mean, see. I, not that I don't know him. I, I know him. Great actor, but. Adore. Adore? Adore. <laughs> uh, Love no, that I'm, Sherlock. As soon as you said these little old ladies and you got the impression going, I'm waiting for the train wreck of, oh, that's the movie about the gay scientist. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> that could have been awful. That's what I'm saying. So this. Alexa decided to start talking to us. That was terrifying. <laughs> We're the only two people in the room right now. <laughs> and no one addressed her. Nope. Rude bitch. What did you say <laughs> that would have triggered that? I, I don't know. It know. wasn't Alexa. It was not. <laughs> yeah, uh, now, you did, now you said it wrong. This is the first step, though. This is how the machines are going to come get you. Yeah, this is it. We say, while well, we talk in front of a microphone and multiple computers and right. phones. and Well, your Twitter account did just... It just was trying to tweet on us. its own. <laughs> There's something about this house that is moving us closer to the singularity step by step. I don't know what it is. It has nothing is. to do with the fact that my network name is Skynet. That actually has a lot to do with it, I feel like. <laughs> nothing to do with it. Um, so, best pictures. Uh, we got to see... In, in advance, we tried to coordinate on this so that we could actually talk about the same picture together. Uh, we both saw Hacksaw Ridge and La La Land. Yeah, conversation goes way better when you you know actually know what the other person's talking right. about. Otherwise, it's just a lot of you know one person describing the plot that you could have easily picked up on. Don't IMDb worry, that comes later. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> um, let's go with what's fresh in our mind, though, right off the bat. Hacksaw, Hacksaw Ridge. Ridge. What'd you think? I loved it. Um, it was really good. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect from it early on. Mm. Uh, I know it had a lot of hype. I remember... Long time before it came out, you know, probably the Mel Gibson factor, Oscar Bay factor, war movie factor. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I had a good sense of like kind of the general overview of the plot going in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was surprised by the delivery. Uh, I was surprised by the, the structure of the movie. The, the war is only the last third of the movie. Yeah, I didn't actually see that coming. Yeah, uh, no, I was surprised. Granted, I mean, this is what trailers try to do, right? They try yeah. to draw you in with, with 
the action sequences that they pulled in, and it's almost all action at it, the end. Which is funny because that's not at all why I wanted to see the movie. No, I wanted to see. I, I was very interested in the story that they were going to be telling. Oh yeah, I mean, and you see these every year. Um, it's the true story that no one's ever heard, right? And it's from like a hundred years ago, and it's like, <laughs> why have we never heard this story? This is this is a story that would have been just as good in 1950 mm-hmm. as it is in 2016, 2017, right? <laughs> Sorry, I, I <laughs> there was, was there was a smirk. No, I didn't have anything to add to that. Uh, I just agree. Uh, so, what did you think of Mel Gibson's directorial style? I mean, what, say what you will about the man. The man's acting. Yeah, let's take that out of here right now. Yeah. Well, no, because I no, but it has. I don't. I don't have any comments on it. Right. But plenty of people do, and they let sure. it influence how they talk about his work. Mm-hmm. He's a good director. Yeah. He's proven this. Passion of the Christ is well viewed no matter what you will about the politics religion facts not facts doesn't matter it's well lauded as a brilliantly made There's, movie so that a side note on that uh, there's a scene in the movie where Andrew Garfield has water poured on him and I'm pretty sure that was just B-roll from Edge on the Christ oh. <laughs> that, that's what it looked like and they just photoshopped his yeah. head in there yeah. yeah no that was um, that was something I mean, that was that a heavy handed baptism scene yeah <laughs> yeah and blood a lot of blood it was awkward yeah um, although I felt like we were going to get something, I, I, maybe I mistook this in the hype machine before the movie actually mm. came out, but I thought the whole Hacksaw Ridge thing was going to come into play, like, the naming of it, like, why sure. they named it. Yeah, it, it, instead it had that very Family Guy-esque moment where they were like, Hacksaw Ridge, and I nudged him. I was like, ah, they said, the movie. <laughs> said it. <laughs> no, it's not even just that, I mean, like, I, I, I cause the whole thing is, it's like, it's following Desmond Doss, mm. whose name I almost forgot, despite the fact they said it 700 times in the right. movie. Um, I'm not gonna lie. At the beginning of the movie, I thought they were saying Dawson. No, it was Doss. I think it was that yeah. uh, that Virginia draw. Probably. Um, yeah, no. But I figured the whole thing with him being a medic and the fact that he isn't going to use a gun at all, and I figured that we were gonna see a hacksaw being used on a leg at some point because plenty of people lost legs <laughs> right. in that movie. Sure. So um, yeah, but there was nothing. It was just kind of like, relentless. Yeah. Um, I want to go and check the facts. How many people lost legs in World War II? Yeah. Horrible, obviously. Yep, those, just seems knees, like... those knee-seeking bombs yeah, that they were I'm... throwing. <laughs> uh, Ridiculous. I don't know. I mean, obviously people die, get blown up, shot, whatever. It's going to happen. It's going to be gruesome and brutal. But yeah. they really like the effect of people's legs being blown off or whatever. Yeah, that was something they, they focused on it. Yeah. A like, lot. There was like one arm that was lost and about six, 60 it, legs. It was a tie back to the, to the beginning of the movie. So, I mean... I, spoilers? Not really. I mean, it's you talking not... about the opening scene where yeah, he's well, on a stretcher? Yeah, we're going to talk about the movie. We're if you, don't, if movie. you don't want to hear about the movie, that's on you if you listen to the rest of this, so I apologize. No, no, no to be fair, though, like, if we're going to talk about a movie like this that's clearly like new, we should say yeah. this part will be spoiled. Sure. Okay. All right, so, I mean, but again, this isn't really a spoiler at all. It's just a, a little hint at that. It's funny, because we're bringing up this whole leg situation in the beginning of the movie, or early on in the movie. A, a car, a guy's working underneath a car, the car drops down, lands on his leg... Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. Andrew Garfield wraps the guy's leg in the tourniquet, gets into the hospital quickly, brings it. The doctor said, hey, did you do this? He's like, yes. Oh, yes, sir. Whatever. You know. yeah. um, I don't have the quotes. <laughs> I don't have the quotes. Um, <laughs> but uh, so he's like, he's like, yes. And that's like the, he, he's like, you, you saved this man's life. So there's this premise, like, of like, there's this whole focus around that the entire time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, I didn't read into it the same way you did with the fact that the kid had his leg crushed yeah. by the car. I didn't think of it that way. I just, you know, the natural foreshadowing of spur of the moment, this peaceful man comes running from working, just cleaning in his church right. to go and save this man's life. Not that he knew he was going to do that. He has no medical training at the time. But you know, just the whole point of, oh, he was asked a lot of in a situation that he was not equipped to handle, did it. And that spurred on the greatness in the man later in his life. I didn't make the leg connection you made. Right. Yeah, I, it was it was it was interesting. I, I I didn't really like. I got I I saw the connection, but I didn't really understand why they kept bringing it in. I didn't get any any more out of it. Yeah, or well, the fact that they kept showing him applying the tourniquets over yeah. and over again. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I mean, I guess. I mean, it's not a skill that requires a lot of skill. Um, you certainly you need. To, to, like do it right to save someone's life to save someone's yeah. limb in that case but um no that's like the most basic of all medical right. things to do <laughs> you have to deal with the fact that blood is typically gushing so sure. like you have to have the 
just I'm just gonna say the balls to do it. Like <laughs> every every time every time though he's doing it, every time he's applying a tourniquet, it's like you wanted this guy. Yeah, <laughs> this is what yeah. you wanted this. <laughs> Although, I mean, actually, even to further drive that point home, right, when he saves, um, I forgot the name of the character, Sarge, for lack yeah. of a better, um, and uh, Hollywood. Yeah. Um, those are their names, because their actual names don't really matter in the movie. Um, Vince Vaughn, Sarge. <laughs> he saves Hollywood, and I don't know whether or not Hollywood himself put the tourniquet on his leg, or Sarge did, but right. he then further makes the point of, oh, you did a great job yeah. with this tourniquet, like, which I guess is kind of a callback to, yeah. like, you know, that's, that's exactly passing the baton, was. like... Yeah. It was kind of cool. Yeah, it was. It was. You know, I guess it was. It was all about the respect and how he kind of influenced them in a way. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like over time, like you know, they they appreciated him. Yeah, no, I mean, it was a big like coming of age type of thing where it's you're looked down upon. You have to find your place, and at the end, the unwavering respect and devotion right. that his fellow soldiers had for him. The you know the fact of whether or not this man is going to go to war, whether or not this man can exist in a world mm-hmm. where. It's just war nonstop when he's had utter refusal to even touch a gun, let alone fire it at the range, practice shooting, or carry it into battle when other people are going to be shooting at him. Mm -hmm. And after all of that, all of the trials and tribulations he faces, external and internal, all of that ends up coming and falling by the wayside is his men literally will refuse to go into battle until he's ready and he's done praying that this man possessed of such faith was... He felt... Like, he was lifted up by his faith. And these other men who had been spitting upon him earlier in the movie are lifted by his faith as well. Mm-hmm. That he gets a call from the colonel. Why have you not assaulted the ridge yet? Sir, we're waiting for him to finish prep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great... great uh, I mean, it's, it, it is. It's, um, I'm going to put this in here now. Uh, we, we are. We're, now we're, we're getting into nitty-gritty details of the movie, which is fine. And I'm all for it. I like mm-hmm. talking about that stuff. Uh, I'll, I'm going to go back and re-edit into this the, the time frame that this conversation starts and ends. Okay. So that if you need to skip around it, you can. Yes, but um, because we're being so spoiler. We're right. yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna hold anything back. Sorry, so, we, we're we, so we watch movie. movies and we want to talk about the exactly. Movie. That's that's <laughs> what the point of this is. Otherwise, just like five minutes of we're gonna talk about the beer, and then we're gonna go into the movie, and we're gonna tell you the whole movie. Yeah, like, yeah. front to back. I mean, and we'll we'll back off some too. We'll talk sure. about because the the we, as much as we want to talk about Hacksaw Ridge right now, the bigger thing was with this whole Oscar thing is we wanted to talk about some of the performances right. and some of the and I think when we get back to that it'll be that'll be the timestamp that I put in for other people to come back in um, so I want to touch on Vince Vaughn again yes total surprise to- total surprise forgot in t- I think I, at one point I had I knew he was in the movie like way back when when I saw the trailer I knew like I think like real early on like there's like a shot of him you know he's in it and then I've completely forgotten until now yeah I, I mean I think I might have had the same experience I, mean, I said it when we were leaving yeah. the movie too I know I had the same experience with Hugo Weaving who plays yeah. um, oh. the, Desmond Doss's father I knew that I knew he was in the movie and then forgot yeah. um, and I'm imagining I went through the same thing with Hugo Trump. Weaving is such a treat oh my god such a treat that gentleman I don't know why <laughs> he can't have his own movie that's like where he is front and center <laughs> because the man is tremendous yeah I mean, the amount of different roles he's played. Is it? He embraces he embraces the villainy in so many different roles. So it's he's so but electric that, when he's on screen. Is that his thing though? Is that like can he? What is he? Is he just too overpowering to be the lead where it would drown everybody else out? If it is, it's kind of a shame. Like they, we're being deprived of that. I don't know that we're being deprived of that. I feel like there's actors that shine as a supporting role, and I feel like he's he he's one of them. Like, well, we've never seen him fail in a lead role where he would have retreated back to that. You know what I mean? True. You would think the the pure electricity that he has on screen, the magnetism of other actors working with him. Yeah. You would have thought that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's not the most interesting for certain types of roles. Like he wouldn't be able to just carry like a run and gun. Maybe now that he's a little older, he's gonna go the Liam Neeson. I don't see it because I think he's one of those guys who's like about his work and stuff yeah. like that. But not to say that Liam Neeson isn't. But um. Daniel Day Lewis type. Yeah, like more in yeah. that role, but we get him yeah. as the lead. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the Daniel Day. Lewis now that we know. said this, though, I want a Daniel Day Lewis movie with him. As the has this happened already? You might know better than me because you follow Hugo Weaving more. I do. Um, I with fan. Daniel Day Lewis as the lead, Hugo Weaving as the supporting actor. I don't even care what the movie's about. Well, I, want, Daniel, I want to see it. Considering you Daniel, got me. <laughs> the hook is there. Daniel Day Lewis acts once every three years um, right. because he's one of those guys. Yeah. Um, I would sign up for that. Mm-hmm. Could we get a reboot of Gangs of New York? Damn! <laughs> where it's Daniel Day Lewis versus oh. Hugo Weaving, but Ooh. plot twist: Daniel Day Lewis is spaceships. No, no, no. <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis is the is the good guy now, and Hugo Weaving is the bad because he is he is the quintessential villain. Mm-hmm. Agent Smith. Oh, he's so good. His many roles in Cloud Atlas, which 
you're going to hear about that movie all the time. We'll, we'll probably do a full episode on Cloud Atlas at one point. I could talk about that movie for eight hours, and this is a one-hour podcast. Eh. One-hour-ish podcast. This podcast ends when it ends. It ends when it ends. We're shooting for an hour. It's going to be two. Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so back to, back to Vince Vaughn. Pleasant, yeah, pleasantly surprised. Uh, Big tangent there. It's my fault. It's going to happen a lot. No, that's fine. I, see, this is what this is about, right? I yes. mean, again, like these are conversations that you and I have. This is real life. We're just recording it. You're for, getting it like, off the cuff. These folks. You're getting it off the cuff. Yeah. It's going to happen. Off the cuff. Yeah. Um, There's going to be a lot of phrases in here. There's going to be a lot of recurring phrases. Yeah, like it's going to be inside jokes between me and Al. Um, and you're either going to either going to get it or you're not. Al and me? The two of us. This is what happens. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're going to get it or you're not? Yeah. Um, Actually, you know, you're sometimes not. They're, fair, some, let's be fair. They're not. You're not going to get them up front. Well, not, 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 not the not inside front, jokes. But like eight episodes from now, they're going to get it. Sure. Then. They'll follow. Or they won't because we'll follow. be making up our inside jokes <laughs> <Right>. then. <laughs> At some point, if we realize we're doing them too much, we'll explain them to you so that you can actually get a the ones that, the ones that we have like a gold standard of. Yeah. yeah. What sucks though is like generally with an inside joke. Uh, well, I, I promise you, we'll get back to Vince Vaughn. Um, what sucks about the, <laughs> the inside joke is that it's really not that funny. <laughs> it's, it's just, Sometimes it's, that it's funny. just the thing it's that we've hung on to, right? <laughs> it's mostly not that funny. Just gonna keep beating that dead horse. I mean, we have, we have we've had some times. We've, we've had, had some good some ones. Times. Um, Vince Vaughn. Yes, Vince Vaughn. <laughs> like I told you. Sarge. Coming back around Sarge. Great character. Here to four. Refer he, to only as Sarge. He does a great... Sarge does this great... <laughs> this great thing. Like he's like... He's so funny in the movie. Yes. And he's like... He's Despite this, being like anti-humor. Like right. Like, he, like He's this comic relief in a, in a movie where like you're like, oh, there's not going to be comic relief. Especially like in the first half of the movie where the stakes are still pretty low. Yeah. There's some jokes played purely for the comedic effect. And it's yeah. easy and it's fun and it's light. Which it is, is a, a complete counterpoint to how dark and deep and heavy it gets later in the movie. Yeah, it's a three part flick. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a like, true act one. It's act like two, act it's three, like, like kind of like that coming of age that you said in the beginning. Yeah, there's the there's the bridge which will be right there in the middle to the end where it is just utter chaos and war, chaos, brutality, and just utter dark. Although you know, it's funny because with that sort of thing, you always get the the dark movie that's been like overshadowed by mm-hmm. the dark tone. Of the actual, and how like there's no actual scene. There's one scene in that whole thing at night, right? Most of it takes place during the day, which is odd because they always take like you know, think of, like platoon, like movies like mm-hmm. that where it's like, um, or um, another incidentally, uh, coincidentally, sorry, um, Mel G- Mel Gibson flick, We Were Soldiers, another war movie. Most of the worst brutal scenes happen at night where you don't know what's going on. It's the boogeyman in the dark type of thing. Right. In the actual war sequences, it's three days and two nights, and most of the scenes are in the daytime. The only real big night scene you get is when he's having the nap while his uh, fellow uh, foxhole mate, um, Schmitty, look Bracey, um, is taking watch, and mm-hmm. he's having dreams, vivid dreams. This man who, he's been so tough, and he's shown no sign of cracking, even despite being brutally beaten spoiler alert uh, yeah. <laughs> oh I'm supposed to do that we're, first right we're still under spoilers it's fine yeah that's uh we're gonna we're gonna kind of dabble in a little bit of both here um yeah so he's having a dream and it's being overwhelmed and he, you can see he has you know this man of conviction who's he won't even touch a gun not even to hand it to someone else mm-hmm. and him and his bunker mate are getting brutally murdered in a dream sequence by a group of Japanese soldiers and there's nothing he can do but you can see that he wants to right he wants to defend himself but there is no defense for that and he wakes up and he says it and he tells his his uh, squad mate I there was nothing I could do and he says the rifle's right there but you know he's never going to take the rifle yeah. but you see that the like not that the resolve is cracking in the dream but it's like it crossed his mind that maybe I should Defend myself. And not that he doesn't completely... He uh, Well, he doesn't defend himself. He defends another one of his squad mates earlier in the movie where he tackles the guy and he holds him down and then the guy ends up shooting him. Mm-hmm. But he just did it purely to save his life. But he wouldn't take the action himself. He never punched him. Nothing. Right. Just tackled him and wrestled with him. And Such a cool scene. Right? Because you know... It, I think that scene makes more... Like, it has more of an impact after the fact. Mm-hmm. Because... 
yeah, he tackled him. So, like, easily, like, at that point, you could be like, okay, like, he's snapped, right? You yeah. could be like, the war is, like, it's here. Someone that he, that he cares for his unit. Like, someone is Although, the, although is well, you know, we know he cares for him. Right. But this is Schmidt again. Right, who was kind of a dick. Who was kind of the tip of the spear for those who were abusing him earlier in the right. movie for being, for their term, a coward. Not true. Um, well, no, uh, I see. I think that was played for effect. The scene where he wakes up yeah. and the other guys were beating him. Yeah, I think it was played for effect for the whole plausible deniability. Sure. Thing. Yeah, this is really vague. Go watch the movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fuck you. Go watch the movie. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. No. So, but think about it. Like you know, he's the one who steals the Bible. He steals the picture of his his fiance. Hmm. Punches him in the face. Tells him to punch him back. He won't. He says, "You're a coward." Mm-hmm. They all say, "You're a coward." And you can see this is the first five minutes of the assault uh, on Hacksaw Ridge where Schmitty distinguishes himself early on. Yeah, why did the hum go away? I have no idea. Schmitty dis- distinguishes himself early on in the battle where you see some of the other guys who talk tough. Oh, we good? Uh, we see some of the other people talk tough, you know, oh, you're a coward. Who's going to be this badass? Who's going to do that? And now you see people pissing their pants as the bullets are flying. They can't see smoke, this and that. And Schmitty... Armed with his automatic rifle, he he stands up. He makes he leads the charge mm-hmm. amongst the the grunts, you know, not sergeant or captain or whatever. He comes up and he's mowing people down, and he is living up. He's he's the only one who's walking the walk after all. Sure. We call him a coward, right? right. You, you see him. Hollywood's pissing his pants. Yeah. Ghoul is like thinks he's dead, even though nothing actually happened to him. Like Sarge mm-hmm. has to slap the shit out of him to get him going. And after all of that, after the success, he's he's helped them advance the position. There's a Japanese soldier sneaking up on him, and it takes the unarmed man to save him, right? Yeah. It's just... Yeah, it's so cool. It's funny. I, I'm sorry. I was focusing on one of the things that you said. It's like you have um, Schmitty, and you have Doss. Mm-hmm. And, like, they're complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. But they're carrying everybody forward. Yes. I feel they're like two one, people... One like two physically, people holding, and the yeah. other emotionally. Right, right. They're like two people holding, like, this, like, this, this net... That's like pulling everybody with them. Diametrically the opposite. Yeah. One oh, gung so... ho, guns blazing, and the other one refusing to carry even a knife into right. battle. Oh, it's so cool. And running around with the boldness of none of the soldiers, more boldly than anyone other than Schmitty, right? right? Running into fire. He says the, the line when they're in the smoke. You keep hearing guys, I can't see the enemy. I can't see the enemy. As you see tracer rounds flying over their head, hitting, hitting them, explosions oh, blowing so around. Good. And he says, Well, shit, we can't see them. Maybe they can't see us either. He could not have been more wrong. Right. <laughs> but he runs right into oh the middle God, of the fire so to save wounded men. And it's like, it's amazing. And, yeah. and you can see those those start to forge the connection between Schmitty. Yep. And he says, you know, I, I I learned to form quick opinions of people and I couldn't have been more wrong about you. And that gets reiterated. Yeah, oh, a big theme film. throughout the whole movie. From his from his own father down to yeah. the last man in, the, in their platoon. Like, Talk about <clears throat> character development. Hugo Weaving doing that total 180. Like, or I guess... But did he though? Yeah, to a degree, or maybe not one eighty, maybe like just shy of. He, like he, he was able to, off, he was able to shake off. Yeah, like he the shackles off this, that bound him. Right, like, you see him as this total dick. Right? Yes. It's really not a one eighty. It's probably a three sixty. No, not, not even that. I, th- I, I looked at it as more of a broken man who found his courage for just one moment, the most important moment to defend his son. And, that, and that's why I say three sixty. And then though. unfortunately had to retreat back into himself. Right, because he. But the thing is, like he he started off. Like you get this glimpse of him, right? Mm-hmm. When he talks about his friends that yeah. he was in the war in World War. Yeah, I. sorry, because we didn't give you the back story. His father Hugo Weaving, uh, the the elder Doss. I don't remember his first name. Yeah. Um, served in World War One as a young man, the way that both Desmond and his brother Hal wanted to serve in World War Two. Mm-hmm. Him and his friends faced brutal, brutal. Uh, He's the only one left. Combat, yeah. Oh. Brutal, brutal combat that, in that World got, War One. That scene got me. He's, and, in, yeah. he's in, in the cemetery telling his son, like, these are my friends. Like, these are the ones that we, like, we got in trouble. Like, I got in trouble with these guys. Every we day, chasing girls every with day these guys. he went, every day he went to the graveyard where, the military graveyard where all the boys from that area went to war in World War One, who passed on. Every day he goes there and he's drinking, he's an alcoholic. Broken man from what he saw in combat, you know, young idealistic man going to enlist and fight for his country, and then now there's nothing left, and all of his best friends are dead, and he goes and pays his respects to them, like, why you guys and not me? Why not me, too? Right. I was, there was nothing special about me, and you've seen that the experience broke him. He didn't end up having stronger resolve from it. It was a man who's 
as his own wife said, was vibrant and full of life when he was when he went away to war. And she explains to the young sons, you know, oh my God, you know, you you don't know the man that I met. The war did this to him, and it's so sad. Yeah. But he finds that courage, even despite the fact that both of his sons did the one thing he asked them not to do in their life, despite the alcohol and the, the beating of him and the threats to his wife and all that. The one thing he wanted for his, he wanted to be a good father, even if he wasn't capable of doing it. Right. And the one thing he wanted of them was, please never go to war. Mm -hmm. I, I've been there. I can tell you it's the worst thing you can imagine. Right. And both of them enlist. Incidentally, weird that we never heard anything about the brother. It was a, it was a strange thread that just kind of like... Like I expected there. whether he lived or died to hear something about him somewhere down the yeah, line. We never heard from him. Very it, strange. Weird. It, it, That's it a very, very though, small, very weird misfire then. I'm curious like if it's like... A, it, it, you know, it suffered probably from production issues slightly. Yes. In yeah, that, I'm sure it's just something case, that like, got cut the, somewhere. The like. brother is this character that's there, and like he's so he's so essential to Andrew Garfield's character. Yes. Yeah, so the, the the movie starts with after kind of an in media arrest thing with like him on the battlefield in Hacksaw Ridge. We go back to him as a child, and him and his interaction with his brother, and that sets the whole stage for why he chooses well, actually, not to kill. Well, I'm going to get back. I have a note down here that I, I'm going to get back to about that. And okay. this actually might explain the brother thing. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, he said he serves a purpose, obviously. Certainly. But, I just, um, it's just weird. There's like kind of that loose thread left. But yeah, and I'll, 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 I'll touch on that soon. Um, but just to, to go back to Hugo Weaving, like, I had 360 for a reason. Yes. Like, so you get this, like, eventually you get this 360 view of him. He, or you see how he kind of turned himself around and he's, realistically like he started as like this man like who was gung-ho like he was he went out for his country to you know to protect and to serve. like you know he just like he went went to and war he found for all it the right was all reasons. like a quote-unquote lie where it's to, yeah. what was the purpose of us doing this when all of these right. young men died so he's a man he is a man that lost his way yes and andrew garfield is a man that will not under any circumstances lose his way he's trying so hard to be the man that he is and stick to it and it was one bit of protection the father tried to offer them yes. right don't do this thing you want. And especially, like, as upset as he was about the brother going, Hal, he's even more upset about Desmond because of how right. cerebral he is and yep. said, you're never going to be able to make this. Mm -hmm. And his line back is, I would never be able to not do this. Yeah. And, and from, from the beginning, you're like, oh man, he's always he's a dick. Yeah. And I, like I said, I don't, I, mean, he I, he, I don't know his name in the movie and even, I, they, I'm pa sure they, Papa Doss. Papa Doss. Uh, they probably said it numerous times. No, they, they no? only said it once or twice. Well, it was even like if, John or something. Even like. if they did, like for some reason, like he can, I can, I can totally believe him being related to the to the other character. He's still Hugo even to me. <laughs> this is his first and last yeah. name. That's just how it works. Um, so he's he's we so we start off at the 180 view though, which is what's really cool about his character. Mm -hmm. That's what I love, right? Like he's like, oh man, like this guy's a dick. Like I don't like him. This is an alcoholic douchebag that I don't care about. Like I, I, I hate him. Quick, quick. Considering we still haven't got back to Vince Vaughn. I, I'm just thinking of Wedding Crashers, Broken Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so like, yeah. So he's like, I love that we start there, that he's like this guy, and then you get that. Finally, you get that glimpse from the words of his of Doss's mother. I, what's his first name? Desmond. Desmond. Desmond's mom. Um, that, like, you know, like he was a good man. Like, like what? Like she, she loves this man. She knows who he is. And like and you, she knows why she you, understands right. which is why she doesn't push back. Which much. is it, it's weird because you think like it's weird. you start you see that and you're thinking like the whole oh like oh she like the Stockholm syndrome type thing like she's like this like this battered wife even like, more like, like there's like, even worse stereotypes like uh, oh they live in backwoods Virginia right it's just, it's, it's old just time so, it's he's so an alcoholic up. you know whatever. but then you then you connect with him when he when he inevitably goes you see in the good in the man to push his that son he's lost. yeah like he realizes like what he's done like that he not what he's done well he realizes what he has to do like to he kind of redeems himself yeah so as as we've been kind of talking around it so we've talked about the trials and tribulations Desmond faces in in basic training where they literally court martial the man because he won't he carries out every order is excels in every test they give him with the exception of firing on the range because he won't he won't pick up the gun mm -hmm. so they court martial him and that is the only thing that shows a brief picture of the man we once knew, Papa right. Doss. Papa Hugo Doss. Weaving, where he will go to any lengths. He puts on his old military uniform. Pre-war. Pre-war. Where he started. Like, yeah. well, well I'm sorry. No, the yeah, military yeah. uniform. But you see, you see him pre-war. You see the good man that is there. Yes. That was broken. So broken and by the war. He regains and that friend. strength. He puts on his uniform and he goes to defend his son yeah. in the courtroom. And... <sighs> 
he succeeds. I love it. That scene just, and it's just chills me a, to the bone. I know. It's, such a, <laughs> it's it, so it's, good. It's such a like infinitesimal like moment like where it's like he has it and he accomplishes his mission. Right. And he retreats back to the man he was. He, because that's all he knows. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that he but, retreats but back to the man. He couldn't he, even stand and face his son after he's he, done. But he, no, leaves, he, he leaves he, his fiance there. He made, he made the push. He broke through. And sure, you know what? That's a this is an interpretation thing, and I say that because it it really is like they they don't show you him again mm-hmm. after that scene. That's it. He's up to you at this point. Um, right? Yeah. Was that the last scene? I think that's the last scene. Yeah, you yeah, remember the right last now. scene is he leaves from the court. That's the last time we see him. And the um, Desmond's Desmond's, Desmond's soon to be wife. Yeah, his fiance. It like tells him that he left. But it's funny. It's like there's this understanding that he has of his dad that you don't get. As the viewer, until that moment, yes, when he's like, he's like, yeah, like I know, like kind of brushes it off entirely. Yeah, he like, says, no, I get it, and then like that's he it. Made, like, that's he, the last time we see her too, oh, which yeah. is like a shame. I was said it was like she, a weird. Yeah, she was good. Like, it was good. She was good, and it was like, it was just odd that we um we see them we see them all we see real footage of them at the end of the right. movie. I thought it was a cool oh, such a punctuation yeah, of was the a movie. Sweet, sweet little treat. They showed, at the end. <laughs> yeah, we showed they showed. Footage of uh, they showed footage of um, Desmond. They showed footage of. I actually think his brother was one of them, wasn't he? I'm not sure. I I, I, I had a hard was, time following the names because the Sam, I'm, the I'm Sam Worthington char- character, Captain Glover. We see him again right. talking about him because he was another person who tried to help put these um, these these roadblocks in front of Desmond. He kept trying to get him. Him and Sarge kept trying to get him to leave. Mm-hmm. They like. Every way, by the book and not by the book, they could get him to leave. They sent him for a psyche valve, and the psyche valve comes back, and it's just a man possessed of his convictions. He is the true conscientious, conscientious objector. He's not actually insane. Mm-hmm. They sent him for psychiatric evaluation because they said he's literally insane. He will not pick up the gun. Right. Ah. Speaking of Sarge, you're Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Um, like uh, I was saying earlier, like how he's like this comic. This starts off as this comic relief character, where he's like the, he's like the that. That comedy movie drill sergeant. Yes, right? he, he comes off like very he's like the first five face. minutes, like he's playing to that stereotype, but you don't mind it because he's so good at it. Yeah, which, and like they, not true to form for him. They had a different take on it though. I feel like in a lot of these war movies, well, he sticks with them. That's what you're talking about, right? What? what? He sticks with them. He does stick with them. Well, I would say a lot of times it's the he he crushes you. It's funny. It's like anti humor, but then. He passes them along. And yeah, you see well, him again. The, well, there's that, but I think you I can guess see I, both sides of the story here. Yeah, but what I think, and I guess this, th- thinking about that in like front, front to back, like he probably like that that works because of this thing that I'm going to bring up. He in a lot of these like these movies where like the drill sergeant is this character that like you know he he breaks you down. That's that's like a realistic thing where mm-hmm. they, they they break you down to build you up. Like right, that's the concept. And he's like a total dick, and it's funny for the viewer. Yes, but. It's not funny for the character. It's the Joker scene. I'm going to make this pencil disappear. Yeah, it's it's so funny for the viewer. But in this situation, I think, and I don't. This is this is one of my things for testament for why Andrew Garfield. I, I just believe, like, I loved his character. I loved the way that he played his character. Oh yeah, it was compelling. Um, the, he kind of snickers right yes. every time that he does. He makes one of these comments like like haha, like this is so fun. like this is really funny. It's, like this you know, is so absurd. And it's great because he does call him on it right, like the way that he does. Joe Sergeant too, although. Back then, change, back then, he would have got decked in the face. Sure. But it doesn't... My uncle got decked yeah, in the face right. because of something but, like that. But, 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 yeah, and I mean, again, this is just a movie. Yes. Um, but sure. uh, this, uh, but like the way that they, they do that, they're like, he's, he snickers, and, but he never, he never stops snickering. Every time there's like one of these little, he, the yeah, thing he is... wouldn't think he'd be able to retain And the reason that, that is, <laughs> but that goes to show you that you cannot break this man. Like, yes. this is who he is, and it, he, it's talked about numerous times, and you, you think there's times where you're like, oh... Oh, he's gonna break, but he's not. With the he's exce- like, yeah, with the he's so not. <laughs> with the exception of his mother and his fiance, every single person looks down on him. Everyone thinks he's a coward. He thinks mm-hmm. he he can't cut it, and he's the one who's the strongest of them all. After right. all that is told, <sighs> so enjoyed that. Oh man, but yeah, like that. Just Vince Vaughn is just so. It was like, a good what, performance for him. Great, like great range for completely, that guy. Completely out of the ordinary for his role. Um, and 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 as much as you know, he comes in as the uh, the like the hard nailed like you know like drill sergeant. He's like he's taking them to task and he's like busting their balls and mm-hmm. everything like that. He's not one note at all. Like yeah. you know, he comes in and once they once the kind of the actual trials of DOS begin, like you know, as they put them with ridiculous stuff, they make them do a twenty mile hike because the whole point is just well, fine. If we can't break you, we're gonna break your 
your squad mates, and then they're going to make you leave. Your, your right. passion for them will cause you to leave to keep them to stop suffering. The guys beat the shit out of him. The kind of the Full Metal Jacket thing where it's like in the middle of the night you beat the shit out of him because he's a fuck up. And it's like, he even says, this can't go on. It can't go on for them. It can't go mm. on for you. Like, son, like, do this for yourself. Yeah. Like, I, save, save yourself from this. So, and now, to, like, on that, like, he's, so the, the, that's just kind of like, at that point in the movie, like, where he's, this is, well, the scene that Al's referring to is they've, they've beaten him. They've beaten Andrew Garfield. They wake him in the he's, middle of the night. They, they, the they just, yeah, they beat the crap out of him. He's on the floor. Um, Vince Vaughn's character comes in, Sarge, comes in. And he's like, he has everybody, like, tell everybody to chill. Well, at ease. Yeah. I don't know war terms. <laughs> <laughs> at ease. Um, and Andrew Garfield is, like, getting ready. He has where he is. He, like, walks in. He's got his shirt off. You see, like, his, he's bruised up. His face is jacked up. His bed is covered in his blood. His bed is covered in blood. And, like, the, the scene is a little, like, it's very, I'm not, obviously the whole movie is scripted, but the scene feels scripted to me. This is actually one of, well, I actually had a minor issue with this portion of, of, of um, actually of Vince Vaughn's character. Like, it was just, it was basically like reading off the script. Yes. Like, you all, you feel like this, and it's like, he's supposed Son, to. Son, you'll never make yeah, it. Yeah. You it, cannot it, it seems a little robotic. Along. Yeah, Please, for sure. I will walk you to the door. Right. And then, uh, but then it's so funny because he immediately redeems himself. And so there's the scene where they're all signing out for leave. And uh, he, they're signing out for leave, and he's they they deny him his they deny Andrew Garfield his furlough. Why can't I say his name? Andrew Garfield? No, his actual his name in the movie. Doss. 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 They they. You're a programmer. How can you not say they, Doss? They deny Doss's leave, um, and because he didn't qualify for rifle training, and they do this thing where I don't know that like I I haven't really focused too much on Vince Vaughn's like actual like career like and really pay attention to his acting and i, I tend to do that when i'm in when it's oscar season mode and i'm like really i, mean, I would say he's movies. a more he's a more accomplished actor but than the typical comedic actor there is a scene there where they pull the camera towards vince vaughn's face or sarge's face mm-hmm. and like he is like when the colonel comes when in the denies col- him yeah he denies him. oh my god and he's just like he's so like he he although it was a little robotic the delivery of the scene prior where he where he's like why don't you just like basically saying like just quit. But I did, think, I did think he softened a bit, though, when he says, like, you can't go on. Yeah. Like, it starts robotic. He does. He finds his humanity in right. the scene. And like, but is that whole, what I love about that scene, though, at where he's being denied, is that there, Vince Vaughn has no words. No. There's no, there's, and he. You can see even he's getting turned uh, there. Yeah. Despite no one else. Like, even, like, the captain's resistant to it. Like, we yep. don't see a lot. I mean, we see the men's faces, but, like, we don't, like, there's no more the, opinion the, there. The men, it's more of, like, a, a like high school kids like observing the drama like yeah, they're, yeah. they're kind of like Just they're, they're like bopping like side yeah. to side like looking like almost as if they're looking over each other like yeah, trying yeah. to see like oh what's going on but like Vince Vaughn looks like he looks broken in a way and it's just we it's, expected him to be the last one to come around yeah. and he's the first one to come it's around it's so believable I loved it yeah I loved it I no, loved he's good, and you can see he's done that in the last yeah. few years with his whole thing like taking on the role in True Detective like sure. he wants to break from the oh he's just that comedian guy right. like you know what I mean like and good for him, like you know. Mm-hmm. Although you, you shouldn't forget your roots or whatever, but sure. I mean, he's a he's a more talented actor than you expect out of right. just guys who just do pure comedy. Like, yeah, it's it, that impressed me. I like yeah. that scene a lot. I didn't expect uh, Sam Worthington's character to care as much at that scene. Yeah, no, uh, and which, even that, he says that, it too. Like, I'm doing me. this for you. Like, mm-hmm. I it seemed like they were going to cast him aside early on in the movie. Like that he wasn't going to get much play. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that he did because he did a good job. I, I wish we saw more of him, not just in the movie, like in recent years we haven't seen a lot of him yeah. post Avatar. He was in The Man and the Ledge and Terminator, and those were what they were. Yeah. Um, and I guess we'll see more of him whenever, in 2037, whenever the next Avatar comes yeah. out, the next four Avatars come out. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 uh, I liked his performance too. I liked his character. It was interesting, you know, because. He gets physically removed from mm-hmm. the situation as he goes and reports back once their assault on Hacksaw Ridge gets thrown yes. back. So, while the rest of the men, including Sarge, who we lose for a long time, we think Sarge is dead. And the rest of the men start one by one to see the heroism of Desmond Doss. Right. And Captain Glover is he's physically removed because he has to go report to his superiors and he doesn't know what's going on until one of the other squad mates tells him and brings him in on it and says, all these men have been saved from our squad. We don't know how. Yeah. And finally someone says it was Doss. And it's like, 
he can't believe it until he sees it with his own eyes when he goes back to Hacksaw Ridge and sees him yeah. lowering a guy down this cliff face while being shot at by Japanese soldiers. Oh my god. Such a scene. Um, I'm going to touch back on, on Doss's brother, Desmond's brother. Hal. Um, Hal? Hal. Is his name? It was... Um, yeah, I forget what they called him. Hal. He, was, he had a okay. longer name. So, I so Hal's brother. Harold or something. We talked about how the, we touched on this a little bit. How he kind of disappears after a certain point in the movie. There's a we find out that Hal enlists. We find out that um, breaking Pop, his father further. We, yeah, we find out that Papa Doss goes off. The, is, goes yeah, off the he's not in. He's not on board. Obviously, could not have been less on board. Could, yeah, exactly. He, he talks was, about the funeral arrangements. Right. And says, "I oh. hope you get shot." Oh my god, that monologue when he talks yes. about his friend getting shot in the back. Oh I'm looking I'm look, <laughs> I'm looking at the nominees now for the Oscars because this is part of why we want to talk about this stuff. Yeah. So Hacksaw Ridge is nominated for Best Picture, Andrew Garfield's for leading role, and I don't think any no one from this movie was nominated in a in a supporting right. role. You but, could have nominated Hugo Weaving and I would have put all of my bags in the, uh, eggs in that basket. Wow. All those bags in that eggs. All, that all those bags in that eggs. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, that scene he talks about his best friend getting killed. Oh, the, the, heartbreaking. Be- Bellu Wood, I think, is the battle mm-hmm. that they fought in. His his three friends died in. I so, want you to get shot in the chest because my friend got shot in the back and he ruined his. Oh, oh my god. Oh, it was horrible. Like, I just you're like, going to die. So I hope you die this way. Right. Ah, oh, Jesus. It was so bad. Um, so sad. Not bad. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah, so we're, we're, it was actually, we're even now. actually poetic. <laughs> um, so what I want to talk about about Hal is that we, we mentioned how he kind of disappears after this scene. So after this, you do not hear about Hal for the rest of the movie. Yeah, the duration of the movie after after he actually ships out is the Battle of Okinawa, right. specifically the battle for Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah. Hal, Hal is Act 1. Act one, never to be seen of again, not again, barely heard of again. Right. So, and here's what here's my thing here. We early on in the movie, and it's it's a it's an odd thing, but he Desmond like Desmond Desmond Desmond. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do this a lot. Doss is gonna uh, be easier for Doss. you. Just, just stick so with Doss. 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 All right. So Doss and and Hal. They uh, not Dawson. It's not Dawson's Creek. De- Desmond and Hal. They 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 they're, they're like you know they rough each other up. They're always like they're a little competitive. His brother. It's great. They mm-hmm. have this, this really cool rapport. At the beginning of the movie, where they're, you know... They're scaling the Blue Ridge Mountains. Yeah, scaling the Blue Ridge Mountain. They run to the top. They, like, chase each other. Desmond wins. You know? Unexpectedly. Unexpectedly. Even from the beginning, you see the... He's he lagging like behind the them as they're hiking. Wait up for me. Well, no, Desmond's that. in front. I thought he was... And the other guy kind of cheats him. His brother it? I thought it was him. the other way around. No, no, I no. kind of forgot. Desmond's in front. First but anyway, 90 seconds. Anyway, like, they, they, have this, they have this cool, like, this brotherly love type thing where, like, they're, they're, like, they're so close, right? And... They're, like, he's this character, like, that really helps with the development of Desmond. And there's a scene where, like, they're, they're always kind of, like, roughhousing and whatnot. And they're fighting each other. And there's, like... It's kind of the crux of the movie. Right. And, like, they... Yeah. And, like, there's just, like, this whole thing about how, like, the, the... They kind of insinuate this. Like, it's because, like, the father's violent, so the kids are violent. Like, that's kind of how they... To they, the point, they, they like, to further, to further drive home, Papa Doss is walking home from his daily... Yeah. Stuff with the the graves of his friends. He's drunk. He hand smashed, covered in blood. Hand covered in he, blood because he smashes right. the glass and he's bleeding. And he says, "That's all I have for you." And he's watching the two kids. He sits down on the porch and watches the two of them go at it. Great, honestly, like like it's funny. Like I love, I, I do like that scene though. He says like, "Oh, it's a good scene." He's yeah. like, I will. What he said, uh, whoever I only have to whoop the one that wins. Yeah, I'm gonna let him go, go because yeah. I only have to whoop the winner. Oh man! So they, they're fighting each other. There's the scene now. Desmond he picks up a brick. And he hits Hal on the head. And full I, on, forehead. full on. Oh, right to the dome. Damn! Like it was like I was like, oh shit! Like this movie's getting serious. He just it was like his, watching. He just killed his brother. This is why. Now, this is you, why he won't you, kill. Yeah, you've seen the previews. You're like, oh, he killed his brother. Yeah, he's gonna be a pacifist. He doesn't. Thank God, Hal his, survived. <laughs> Hal survived. He didn't kill him. But it's funny because like when you later on in the movie, he finally gives Schmitty an idea of why he won't fight. Mm-hmm. And it's not that scene. No, it's the scene is something that he had that quick dream about. Quick dream, yes. When he was Where in prison, you're not sure whether it happened. Right. Whether he was worried it would. Yeah, happen. like is it like this strange like uh, like pseudo reality where he's like is he's this the real life? Is home it right now, and this is what's going on because his dad's still a dick, but he's actually not at this point. He's actually been quite reserved, and, and he's we, a little we older. Find now out. Too. We find out it's because of this scene where he stopped him, which is weird because it totally would have gotten behind it. It wouldn't have been too. 
like cliche for oh he almost killed his brother right because there's the whole scene like they really drive home he's staring at the there's a picture of the Beatitudes of the Ten Commandments yeah. very religious family and he's so focused on that shall not kill over a picture of someone being killed right, right. well it's also it's the Cain and Abel was scene. it Cain yeah, yeah okay. it was so um, the the thing though that what I loved about this and this is part of the reason why the the character is he's not for the rest of the movie the brother. The brother is, is for a little insight. Which is a little disappointing it, a plot it, device. Yeah. It was it was a little insight though into Desmond for the viewer, and that's it. And maybe and you know, his close family, sure. But like So we do see him later when he asks we've, the so, girl out on a date. Right. So, so so here's the thing, though, this is what I'm what I'm getting at is the point where he explains to Schmitty why like basically explains to him why he won't fight and he gives you he, he basically retells the story of like his father was, you know, he hit, hitting wife. the booze Hitting his wife and pulls out a gun. Des- yeah, pulls out a gun. Desmond comes in, stops him, holds the gun to him, cocks the hammer. Cocks the hammer. Oh, oof. intense, intense. And then Papa Doss says, "Pull the trigger." Right. And like you, so like in that moment, like you get this whole, you get this whole scene, like of this, what's that, like this poor, this broken man, right? But and, De- his, and Desmond at, the, at rock bottom. Rock bottom. That's rock bottom. Right. And Desmond won't. He doesn't do it. And he realizes, like, oh, like he's like he like he realizes what he's about to do, and he stops himself. And it's the reason I do feel the only reason that he stops himself at that point is because of the trauma of almost killing his brother at the beginning of the. Movie. Oh, sure. I mean, they're definitely right? connected, right? Right. But that's for you. That's for the viewer. Yeah, it's so it's not, cool. It's, yeah, it's, not, it's not for anybody else in the movie. Him. It's not for any of the characters. It's never retold to anybody else. Yes. it's just for you. It's like. It's like it's just, telling no, a little it, bit more two, of the two, story. It's for two people. It's for you and it's for Schmitty. It's for Sh- He's telling him the story. But he doesn't tell him about his brother. I'm saying the brother of peace. Oh, okay. Is, I see it's just mean, for yeah. you. Like that's just like you yeah. you understand how he gets there. Schmitty doesn't care about those details. He sees, oh, I almost killed my dad. It was like but I stopped him and like it well, killing's he, not he the He does way. though, because he says, Oh well you had a father. I didn't yeah. know my father. I was left in the orphanage. I'm a tough guy. And, and I mean, it sucks. So especially yeah. back then, I'm imagining orphanages were way worse than they are now. Mm. Not that they're great now. But, yeah, it's the whole thing. And then the line he says, too. I didn't kill him, but in my heart I did. Right. Oh. That was deep. Ooh. And, and you know, if you want the whole thing for like him being nominated for Best Picture. Or not Best Picture. For Best, best, for best Actor. That, that line, that, that the scene. scene. Like, yeah. I, I, oh, I can get behind it for that scene. 100%. I would... Oh. I wholeheartedly agree with that. <laughs> um, and yeah, so he so to to move the Oscar conversation forward that we started like forty minutes ago. Uh, Andrew Garfield is up for best actor. I was just going to ask if you want to move on to different. Yeah, we, we, we can move, we can because I have a lot to say about our next topic. Sure. Um, so Andrew Garfield up for best picture. Uh, I totally get it. I get it. Um, I I wouldn't. It wouldn't be who I would pick necessarily. Sure. I didn't think it was. I, it was fine. He was good. I just don't know that I would necessarily. Give him it for that. Right. I wouldn't be offended if he gets it though. Right. I, yeah. Uh, it it's not, it's not a thing. It's not a thing that I would be upset about. Honestly, though, like it's not. It, I won't. That seems a little bit too like passive. Like I. It's not that I wouldn't be upset. I'd be happy for him if he got it. I think he deserves. Well, it. I, mean, I, I do he think he deserves it, it. Yeah. No. I mean, he did. He did. He checked the boxes. I just didn't resonate with me wholly from start to finish the way I would want sure. my best picture or my best actor. And it's movie. before this all had started, I was like listening, like I would see the trailers and I would listen to Andrew Garfield's, um, the, the accent that he uses, like the accent that he puts on for this role. Yeah, whole Virginia and accent, it yeah. seems a little bit forced in the trailers, but I was like, oh, I was like, what worried about, what worried me about the trailers and his accent in the trailer is that I thought it was going to break at random parts in the movie. Yeah, you it see, doesn't. you see high stress situations a lot of times. You see the the accent break. I don't think it does. Though. No, no, well, no, I mean, not for him. I mean, oh, for in general, actor, yeah, yeah, just the generic. Right. And, no, I thought he, did, I think he that, did an adequate job with that. I think that speaks volumes though to the actor because he like he took on the character and this is who he is. We always talk about it though with with British actors. They do the American accents, way, but it, you know, because he. I guess it's a little easier to play into a, to like a <laughs> you play to a stereotype like that because the whole thing same thing with like like a Walking Dead like Andrew Lincoln like right. doing the uh, overly aggressive. We have to find Carl. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> <laughs> you do the whole, like overly aggressive like Deep South accent. And it's like Ooh. it's easy to quote unquote easy to stick there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But uh, overall, Hexel Ridge, I get it. 
Oh yeah, definitely yeah. worth. And def- this is this is definitely this worth watching. And if that one won Best Picture, or Best Director, like totally, like I get it. The, I would I would be much more supportive of. Not that I'm not supportive of Garfield himself, but sure, I would be way supportive of those so, two. Like it was really really good. And this is something that I want to touch on though. Like the um, I I do have a I've I've had issues with Best Pictures, Best Picture nominees in the past. Who hasn't? Right, and uh, I, we're not going to get into that. We're past it. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they'll come up at some point, but. <laughs> Crap. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the again, um, I just think that it's deserving. I I agree. Yes, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And no, this is one of those ones that like they got it right. I'm glad. Yeah. They're doing it. I'm glad it's there. Like yeah. this is the opinion of Alessandro and Anthony Costanza. There's no. <laughs> so let it be done. Yeah. So let it be done. <laughs> um, right. So Axel Ridge up for best picture. All for it. Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate what that movie, like the way that movie was shot, everything about it. I, yeah. I really, I oh, really did enjoy it, despite the brutality. The brutality shot. was rough, and that will be a topic on another show. It is something that I have written down that I would like to tackle at some point, mm. and how war movies, the, my perception of war movies, has has changed over the years, and that is well, war movies themselves have changed over the years. True, starting with Saving Private Ryan. It's not just it's not just the way the movies are shot. We'll, we'll get we will get into it at another time. It's not just the way the movies are shot, but it's the way that I feel towards. Them. Sorry, you guys aren't going to listen to a five hour podcast, so we're gonna we're gonna right. save that for later. Save it for later. <laughs> um, and again, back to Andrew Garfield, deserving nominee. Yeah, I agree. Deserving. I agree with that. Um, 